That was Laura Larco and Keel. Um, another thing that we had to cancel tonight, we were going to have a spelling bee between Dan Quayle and a third grader, but we ran into a problem with bedtime and Marilyn wouldn't let Dan come out. So we, we had to skip that one too. Uh, what we're doing now, we're, we're getting into the senior citizens portion of, of the show. <coughs> now, now we're getting into the people who were regulars at Bread and Roses. Uh, our next guest, there are not enough things. There, there are so many things I could say about Gary, but, but this is being taped. So uh, let, let me just introduce a man who was, and I think still is one of my best friends, Gary Green. You know, I wasn't going to say that, but since you said that, the outlaw folk singer, you know, when I came to Baltimore and actually, if it, maybe this will explain some of my bizarre behavior to some, some people that note that it's bizarre. Besides being insane, uh, actually at the time that I was running Bread and Roses, uh, I was a fugitive wanted by the FBI uh, for some political stuff out of Tennessee. Uh, fortunately, it fizzled in about 1984, and uh, they dropped all the charges, and the people that were charging me uh, all went to prison. <laughs> Hence, uh, so actually, the, you know, when, when Folkways put out my last album in 82, the name of the album was Still at Large. Uh, I actually stole the, the line from the way that the Great Lines Radio Conspiracy always signed off. But, uh, I mean, we were laughing saying Gary Green's Still at Large, so what? Which has nothing to do with anything that I'm about to sing, but then Cliff said the outlaw folk. Sometimes I deliberately try to do it to see who I can piss off in the audience. Uh, the, the worst time I ever did, I haven't really played in public and done this for about 10 years, but I made one exception in, I think it's like 1986 or 1987. I went to Nashville, and, uh, you know, Nashville has this, uh, this live, this clear channel AM radio station, Radio 650, and the Grand Ole Opry broadcast live. And right after the opera goes off, they have this uh, live broadcast nationwide sent out with this clear channel show called the Ernest Tubb Midnight Jamboree. Now you can imagine something called the Ernest Tubb Midnight Jamboree, the kind of performers that it attracts. 
Uh, so there I was in Nashville, and it's a live audience, a little cozy room there's just in a studio, and there's like 200 people in there, really hardcore, traditional country fans. And I was invited on the show because I had learned to play guitar from, from Maybell Carter and did a lot of traditional uh, country stuff. So uh, always being good at picking uh, my material for the audience, I uh, did this song that I'm about to do for you, which starts out by uh, saying that uh, the biggest, uh, biggest mistake that ever happened to the South is that General Sherman stopped. Um, you can imagine how it went over in Nashville. <laughs> in fact, uh, you know, everybody gets polite applause. I mean, even if you're bad, and folk singers are used to being bad, you get, you know, a little polite applause. It was dead silence. And <laughs> I mean, and, and, and that means in radio talk, it was dead air nationwide. It was like, oh, he's finished. <laughs> basic Grand Ole Opry uh, warm-up number. There's another song that I used to do a lot. I mean, I don't even remember the words to this. I hadn't done this song really in, in about 10 years. Um, I wonder what this beeping means. <laughs> um, actually, the last time I did this song, I did this at a coffee house in and the owners of the coffee house asked me not to do the song anymore because they said with my accent and being from the south it sounds too serious and that it might not be a comedy song just in case anybody's wondering i'm not serious about anything well jesus christ was a republican you're not, you can go to hell. You can redeem your soul with my TV preacher. He's got little flag pins to sell. Well, I don't give a damn about Mexicans, and I never did care for Jews. I'm a member of the moral majority, and the Army's going to enforce my views. You know, I wrote this about Jerry Falwell, but damn if it doesn't apply today. <laughs> well, I got no use for the food stamp books just to feed a bunch of loafers is all. They ought to take them labor organizers and burn down them union halls. Now I'll pay a little gal to show me a good time, and I see no reason to stop. At least she's not one of them big mouth girls who thinks she belongs on top. Said Jesus Christ was a Republican, and if you're not, you can go to hell. You can redeem your soul with the TV preacher. He's got little flag pins to sell. Well, I don't give a damn about Mexicans, and I never did care for Jews. I'm a member of the moral majority. The army's gonna enforce my views. Now, being one of God's tame children, I love. 
of every inferior race. I don't mind hiring a colored boy if he remembers to stay in his place. I don't need no woman of mine tell me her body is hers to control. Hell, I got enough problems with them radio stations playing that godless rock and roll. Because Jesus Christ was a Republican, and if you're not, you can go to hell. You can't redeem your soul with the DVD preacher. He's got little flat pins to sell. Well, I don't give a damn about Mexicans, and I never did care for Jews. I'm a member of the moral majority, and the army can enforce my views. Now one day soon, my savior's gonna return in his alligator shirt and Mercedes limousine. It's gonna be a day of reckoning like them pinko liberals has never seen. But until the Dow Jones prime time on that final judgment day, well, it's up to me and Jerry and George and Dan and a few white lips to drive them sinners away. Oh, Jesus Christ was a Republican, and if you're not, you can go to hell. Can't redeem your soul with my TV preacher. He's got little flat pins to sell. Well, I don't give a damn about Mexicans, and I never did care for Jews. I'm a member of the moral majority, and the army's gonna enforce my views. words to a world that's trying to grow. Oh, New York City ain't no place to be. Searching for the God you'll never see. Looking for a dream in the devil's hideaway. And never knowing that there ain't no easy way. Yesterday's magazine. Where the sidewalk turned gray with age the day they were born. Sisters in the night lay their bodies on the street. There's a wide eyed cowboy wandering, just trying to sing his song. And a specter of tomorrow hums along. Clever introduction. 
introduction for all these songs, but I forgot them all with you. <laughs> Get a signal from the recording people to knock this off for a minute while they switch tapes or something. It won't take me that long to put this case on anyway. There were a number of things that uh, led to the closing of Bread and Roses, and particularly for me getting out of the music business. I mean, a number of things other than being bad. Uh, in uh, on election day in 1984. Uh, and I punched through a, uh, I was punching at something on the other side of it, but I punched through a plate glass window. And uh, they rushed me to the hospital and all this stuff, and they, they cut my wrist. And it was okay going through, it was coming out, it was pretty bad. And uh, I, th I think I had a, they had this hand specialist that was brought in, and, and I was laying there, and the, they didn't want to put me to sleep, you know, they wanted me to be awake while they did all this stuff, and they had this nerve block on me, and my hand's up here, and these guys are operating on it. And I was real worried that I wasn't going to be able to play guitar anymore. So I, uh, it's probably the worst bedside manner in the history of medicine. I said to the doctor, look, I'm a guitar player, and, and the doctor deadpan said, not anymore, you're not. I thought, that was lovely. Uh, at any rate, that, uh, that pretty much destroyed what little career I had in the music business, but it was so small it wasn't that important anyway. And I went back to, I guess, my, my first love and my first work, which was working with labor unions. Um, and the only reason I'm telling you this now because it sort of leads into this song which is not an autobiographical song I didn't even write it but uh, I'm working under contract right now with the American Federation of Government Employees <laughs> and uh, it, there wasn't a lot of publicity about this but we just uh, we just last week uh, won the largest union organizing drive in American history 
uh, representing uh, 56,000 employees in one bargaining unit, we drove off a raid from a scab union, a non-AFL-CIO union, uh, and drove them back to the pits of hell where they came from. Um, I thought about writing some song, you know, to memorialize the event, but then I decided that I think Woody Guthrie did it better than I did anyway. <laughs> a lot, long time before I did. that made the raid. Well, she went to the union hall when a meeting it was called. And when the company boys come around, she always stood her ground. Oh, you can't tear me. I'm sticking to the union. I'm sticking to the union. I'm sticking to the union. Oh, you can't tear me. I'm sticking to the union. I'm sticking to the union till the day I die. company spies she'd never be fooled by company spear she'd always organize the guys well she always got her way when she struck for better pay she'd show her card to the national guard and this is what she'd say Cliff called me about this, seriously, when Cliff called me to do this, I, I wasn't going to perform, I was going to put together a bunch of people and, you know, say, do it, rock and roll, have a good time. Um, I'm really glad we did this, I mean, I, this, this ain't anywhere near over, there's lots of other people that are going to play, but I just want to say, I'm glad we did this. Uh, it's been a bad ten years, but it, a lot of good work's happened in this building, and uh, this has been good. Thank you very much. Yeah, I want to say a word, too, about this. Um, when I asked Gary to, uh, to put together an evening of folk music and uh, um, a little bit of 60s nostalgia, but uh, contemporary topical music as well, um, I asked him if he would also perform. He said, no, I, I retire. I don't, I don't sing anymore. Uh, well, I'm glad I twisted his arm and got him out of retirement for tonight's performance. Aren't you? 